Welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Lovely to see you. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Sai. Lovely to see you, Bernard. Very nice to catch you all. Welcome. You have a nice cup of coffee near you. Please do mention in the chat where you're ringing in from and um, just introduce yourself to others. I think usually we have people from all over Europe joining these calls, which is a real treat for us. So please let us know. Hello, Estelle from Munich. Lovely to have you with us. And more from Berlin. Yes, a bit rainy here. I'm in London. Looks like we'll get some sun soon. Brilliant. Well, huge welcome. Um, we we'll just wait a couple more minutes as I know lots of people were um, hoping to join this call. Uh, hello, Annalie. Hello, Thomas. The, the Nordic contingent is strong, which we are very pleased to see. I'm sure it's very cold with you. Thank you for bringing your, your coffee and yourselves to this. Hello, Antoine and Veronique. Super. Excellent. Well, as it's a bit of a sort of short um, time we have together, we just have this one half hour slot where we try and really open up the conversation about what does it mean to run a business in the interest of all those who contribute to it. And of course, that's the obvious people like employees. It's also the suppliers. It's also the customers or the clients. It's probably the, the planet in some way, some environmental and um, some land is often used. And it's probably also families of those involved and it's probably future generations who are also involved. So there's a long, long chain of interest and um, frisson that's caused by any company operating that has a connection in, uh, across others. And so really, Chiesi has been a fantastic leader in the B Corp movement, set up at the HQ in Italy, um, but really leading by demonstrating how uh, a big pharmaceutical family owned company can really take on the values that are so important to what we would call interdependence. And so it's a real treat to be here today with Olaf Fromm, who is the managing director of Chiesi in the Nordics. And we've got to meet you through some of the work that we've been doing around the policy work. So we're very grateful to our colleagues, Nila and Thomas. In, uh, in Sweden for introducing you to us. Um, and just to give a little bit of back context, um, we're really um, looking to understand a little bit more from PAZ about how this really comes to practice, into, into real practice, how you make this real, how the, the commitment of the company for generations has been something um, that you live out in your work in the Nordics. So that's this kind of thread. And at the end of the conversation, we'll just bring in a little bit more of how this ties into our kind of policy work that we're doing with the Interdependence Coalition, which is a very hot topic at the moment because the European Union are working on this draft um, kind of, uh, legislation as we speak. But we'll come to that at the end. First, we'd love to hear from you. So welcome, Ola. Lovely to have you with us. Maybe you could just introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you, how, how, how you come to be here and um, and where you are and what brings you to this work. Yeah, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me here. It's, uh, it's a really great pleasure to be here. And uh, uh, I'm in a rainy Stockholm as well. So uh, we have uh, we'd had that in common as well. And uh, it's, um, uh, I've been working for KS for 11 years, so not for generations, but, uh, and my scope really is the, uh, is the Nordic countries. But of course, I'm, uh, I have, um, uh, I work closely with with the corporate function, and, and KSC is a, is, a, is a pharmaceutical company uh, based in in Parma, Italy, uh, with uh, seven thousand uh, people across the globe, and I'm responsible for about a um, hundred people and the uh, uh, the full operation, the, the, the affiliates here in the uh, in the Nordic setting. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it's it's a pharmaceutical company based on. Uh, with with uh, with products related to respiratory diseases, special care, and rare disease system. So mm. Super. We'll come on to that in a minute. But Olaf, just a bit more about yourself. Are you a scientist by background or a general management expert? Uh, no, I'm. I'm. Uh, I I started business administration and, mm -hmm. and uh, worked for some some big companies uh, before. And uh, I was attracted to Kiesi due to the uh, um, due to I would say that the family commitment there is, and also I mean the long-term work that Kiesi has been doing also in the 
uh, in the local setting in, in uh, for instance, in, in Parma, where they are based, where they are very uh, a very big part of the local community there, um, and a very engaged uh, owner family, mm. which which attracts attracts you and 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 the connection between Chiesi and Parma and Chiesi in the Nordics I uh, it's quite a strong connection maybe even you physically when you can get there but uh, yeah how yeah, does that no, work <laughs> yeah no it actually is because I mean one of the products was is uh, uh, that we're working with was actually um, developed at the Karolinska Institute in, in, in Stockholm and then uh, there were some some Nordic companies that didn't have the possibility to uh, to pursue that product, and and then it was uh, uh, due to um, some circumstances. It, it, it happened with Dr. Paolo Chiesi, and, and and was developed this product, which now has saved actually a million lives of, of premature babies, and, mm. uh, and also Dr. Paolo Chiesi was. Um, uh, he was um, uh, he was promoted honorary doctor at the Karolinska Institute uh, with um, with a nice hat and a big yeah, ceremony yeah. and so forth. Very big uh, honor, of course. Well, so there's a big connection, and we still have a lot of. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I don't know about you and everybody on the call. I'm sure everybody's been touched by COVID in so many ways, but um, we really do take our hat off to scientists now, don't we, uh, who've been leading the thinking and driving change so much faster than we could have imagined. I wonder, with Casey, Casey having this kind of focus also on respiratory issues and Italy being such a central place where the COVID um, virus initially was, uh, was, was really kind of landed in Europe, has that been a big part of uh, Chiesi's work in the last couple of years? No, I mean, I mean, from 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 my perspective, it, it's um, uh, well. First of all, for uh, I mean, all the all all the patients and people and, and relatives that have been affected. I mean, it's it's, it's really a, a terrible um, terrible disease. And um, but but for us, we were. I think the the, the challenge for us was really providing medicines and and we managed that and it was was a very it was quite tough to make sure that the the uh, delivery systems were were able to go through because asthma and mm -hmm. cpd for instance that we are working with is very uh it's it's important to be to to have your disease under control um when when you get covid and, and from i would say from my perspective also being in the in the far north so to say it was uh uh, when COVID kind of exploded in in the area, Reggio Emilia and so forth, it was uh, we were kind of uh, left alone in a way because uh, because the, uh, due to the crisis in in, mm. in pharma. But thanks to the I would say the, the values of KSC and the work that uh, I was I, I I felt that I, I I knew what I had to do when I did it and. Uh, uh, and it was supported afterwards by by KSC. but it was was a very very severe situation at that uh, at that time, as you know, um, since we we didn't know anything about the disease. No, absolutely, and I mean, you know, the 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 patients, the people suffering, and everyone who takes your medicine, who benefits from your equipment, these are all the key stakeholders for whom the whole company was built in the first place was to help people. Uh, overcome overcome illness or prevent them having it. So it feels extraordinary to have been put to the test in such a dramatic way as as was the case. And obviously, I'm sure it's ongoing. And was there much collaboration between pharmaceutical companies in that time? Do you think, uh, as we were trying to collectively bring? No, absolutely. And I mean, being I think one thing being part of the farm association is 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 a good thing because that then it becomes a, a through stakeholder and and I mean some of the, the some of the things that sort of cry for help also in 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 many ways and and for instance we had uh, we have some nurses employed and they were uh, we we sort of left them out in order to uh, uh, make vaccinations but mm. in order to uh, to be able to contribute in 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 some way because everybody wanted to contribute in, in yeah. but it's it's hard to know how to do it, but we could we could do it. I'm very I'm very grateful for that, and I'm very grateful for my for my colleagues that put uh, put uh, their their time and 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 effort into it. And also at the time when it was when when we didn't know how 
how dangerous it was. So yeah. they, you know, they, they put they put quite a lot at stake. Mm. I'm very, I'm very. Do you, do you think, I mean, I'm wondering for companies generally, and Chiesi obviously a case in point, do you feel that through these whole last two years, and obviously Chiesi being much closer to the front line than some companies are in seeing the need, I wonder how we now think about employees and support from how teams in companies might now be um, either treated in different ways or different arrangements different voices might be heard as a result of some of what we've all gone through do you feel there's some changes in the way we've basically run our kind of operations that amount that come from this uh to you i mean maybe less than i expected uh mm. in a way as the the digital movement i mean it, it moved so fast that we turned all the meetings into zoom yes. and teams meetings so it's so, it, but but I would say the uh, the thing that you really need is uh, is actually I mean meeting each other. You can mm. you can in a way uh, when you interact interact through digital ways. It's it's a way of uh, you can you can sustain a relationship in a way, but you cannot build a relationship, and nice. that is that is within an organization to and also that is purpose driven. Uh, uh, you need to meet in order mm. to get the. And then you need to meet to get uh, uh, to that, that is that is the fundamentals of trust really. So, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. so of course it, we've been trying to do things in order to. We actually, uh, I mean, one of the things that we did was to have a, a weekly town hall, and uh, uh, with all the employees. And I was trying. Okay, now we were a little bit post COVID. I was trying to take it away, but it was uh, I couldn't do that because now it's part of the culture. So mm. we meet every for 30 minutes and uh, it's a great way of sharing and also since we are an organization that is that is scattered around the uh, around the nordics it's uh, it's a very good thing um that's, yeah. a di that's digitally obviously yeah that's a digital gathering yeah i was just thinking also when you mentioned about the nurses that you have in your teams and who you then kind of released almost to to go out into the field I was thinking about that kind of flexibility and agility that we could potentially continue to think about and ensure that um, people who've got, you know, knowledge, skills, and um, things that are really required in the big world um, aren't just almost kept protected just for the company. There's some, I think, some interesting thinking there. It'd be lovely if people in the chat who are listening, if they have thoughts or experience of um, their views on how we might um, think about flexible ways, not just of flexible hours of working, which obviously are important, but also how we think about talent in our teams that could be um, yeah, spread around for other, other uses, uh, as was demonstrated by what you were doing at Giesi. It's very interesting to hear that. Um, Lovely. Yes, uh, no, please. Uh, regarding because that is that is basically I mean being a B Corp, this is something that we that we also uh, that we also measure uh, and that we uh, that we put into practice and then for I mean uh, agility and uh, and also trying to do um, in a way uh, work for the society and so forth is an important part of being a B Corp and. And uh, I think it helped us being a B Corp that we have some kind of, uh, of, of, of system in order to in place from an HR perspective and so forth in order to be to be fast and agile and mm. to help in this way. This is, of course, something that we need to uh, um, need to work with further together with with, yeah. with our stakeholders. Excellent. Yeah. No, I think we've all learned how we could run run businesses differently and we mustn't lose that uh, as we all return back. So that's super interesting. Let's talk more about your stakeholders generally. Um, could you just identify roughly in Chiesi's world, you know, how, the, how your stakeholders are showing up in the organisation, how you really engage with them in the different uh, ways that are open to you? Uh, yeah, it's... it's um... Uh, I mean, in a way, I mean, B Corp puts it into a framework that I think is very good. I mean, from the corporates, corporate is a big B Corp, but also the affiliates are. Yes. So we really, and uh, I would say that it was a bit of a pain when it when we we started because it's change is always painful. Uh, but now we uh, we are. Um, in a way, we have to engage with our with our stakeholders even more, I believe, and I think uh, 
Uh, and I think also the, the setting that, that Casey has, uh, the, the choice that Casey has done also here is to be uh, uh, being a, a, a benefit corporation. So the sustainable yes. company form in, in Italy, it's also uh, entitles us to, where, where it, it gives us the possibility to be even more um, interactive with our stakeholders. And I think, I think the point here is that we are, uh, we are relevant to the stakeholders yes. also. So we, we can interact with them. They are interested to hear what we, mm. Uh, mm. What we think. So, so I think those, those, two, those two principles, basically, the B Corp and the, uh, the, 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 the benefit corporation form, which brings to, uh, to the, the, say, the dual values in, uh, uh-huh. that we are working with, it makes, uh, and to me, it makes me guiding principles in the lo- the local setting, which I think is uh, is important. It's super important. But th- that, thank you. No, that's that's absolutely, I think, the core of it. And for those of you on the line who are not familiar with the B Corp um, legal requirement, which in Italy is actually uh, addressed through a specific legal form called Societa Benefit, basically the legal requirement is embedding into the company articles the obligation and the pleasure, to be honest, to consider the interests of all of those that contribute to the success or to the operations of the business. So it's not uh, about just saying, well, the shareholder is the only interest that I have to think about. The, I actually need to think about all the different um, people who and planet who contribute. So that's a, um, a, a really key distinguishing feature between um, a, a B Corp or any company that does this and perhaps what would be a regular company. And in the Nordics, and thank you Gudrun for posting the legal requirements, that's super helpful. Do have a look if this is something that's new to you, because I think where we're heading is, I think what has been shown is that businesses that are run for the interests of shareholders alone or shareholders of the primary interest are, are falling over. Um, they may be short-term benefiting, but they are actually being called to account so much that we, um, we, we can see and have tested now a better and alternative system. And um, because of the 4,600 B Corps across the world, and I think about 10,000 companies who've actually made the legal change as well, we can actually identify that there are other ways of doing business. And then we have stories from uh, all around the world of companies who are actually living this out and making the difference. And that's really what uh, we're, we're hearing today. And this then is a really powerful antidote. You know, if you want to change a system from being shareholder dominated, you have to first recognize that there is um, a problem with the existing system. I think most are fairly comfortable with recognizing that. There's not that many people I talk to now who go, really? What's wrong with our capital system, capitalist system? But you do need to think about what's an alternative. And this is what I feel we have as a, as a, um, a, a sort of pioneer case to offer is that the B Corps have shown this. Um, so, yes, yeah, so let's dig in a little bit deeper to how this looks in practice. So um, maybe you have one stakeholder example that you particularly want to share, whether it's a supplier or whether it might be um, maybe the environment as a silent stakeholder, but one that you consider. How have you thought about really engaging with them? Yeah, just let me start with a little story, because it was uh, uh, one of the, the shareholders, Maria Paula, at the time, Maria Paula Chiesi, she called me, I would think, seven years ago and, and asked me, how, how do you work with sustainability, Ola? And uh, my resp- I, was a little, I was a little surprised by the question because in the Nordic setting, as I believed, uh, I mean, we, we, we basically invented sustainability. I mean, we have a social security system. We have a very low, uh, uh, I mean, corruption rate. We, have, we think we are, the, I mean, the best in many ways in, in that kind of environment. And uh, I think that was a wake-up call for me because uh, uh, we do have a very big responsibility as a, uh, as a company. So this this has taken quite some time to 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 come to this to this work. But I think the the work that we have been uh, that we, just to give you a concrete example on how we are doing is um, a couple of months ago we had a sustainability advisory board, which uh, which was basically our our, our where we collected our, our most important stakeholders. Um, so the, the regulatory authorities, uh, the industry association, the uh, patient advocacy groups, and uh, some, uh, some external ex- experts and so forth. And I think the beauty of this 
is not only, I mean, sharing our story, what we are doing, and we become relevant and we can, we can talk to them and interact and, and so forth. But I think the important thing is that we, we get information yeah. and insights from them in order to, uh, I mean, to, to, to tweak the way we are, yeah. the way we do business. So we get, we get extremely good insights that is good for our business. So that is, uh, so, so it's, 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 it's really a win-win situation. Mm-hmm. And you have dual purpose. And you, uh, you, 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 you make a profit. And you are sustainable in the long term. Mm-hmm. And you, you go away from the short term, uh, the shortcuts in order to make fast money. So it's, it's really a win-win situation. And, and I think this, this, um, this entire setting that... Uh, I mean that the initiative that Kirsch has taken from the corporate setting to, to be that we are B Corp and we engage within the um, uh, within the sustainability company form uh, is is um, is giving me a very good principle in order mm. to how to how to act on my local market. That's super. Yes, I, I mean absolutely intended to be a benefit both ways, and in fact, it nicely links to Per Delberg's question in the chat actually. And maybe you just have a view on this, which is kind of what would your advice be to a traditional family-owned pharmaceutical business that's starting to look and embark on the journey for B Corp? What were the biggest challenges for Casey? That's quite a big question, but if you have a general sense of how how that's played out, um, that would be super interesting to hear. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, first of all, B Corp is, is very unknown in, uh, in, in the Nordic. It's a bit more known in, in Denmark. Sweden is starting. Uh, and uh, I mean, it's a little bit of pioneer work in here. Uh, but at the same time, I like, I mean, I like what is said in the, I mean, the, 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 um, uh, with the spirit of the SDGs that we're working with, and as well as in B Corp, I mean, no, leave no one behind. I mean, try to be inspirational, try to be inclusive in this way, because it's not, it's not a matter of being the best. Of course, I want to be the best, but, but, but it's not on the cost of anyone else. So I think uh, engaging here with, um, uh, with, with, for instance, stakeholders as um, uh, suppliers, uh, because there you can make a really big difference. Because right. suppliers is, uh, uh, I think, I mean, if we look at our business, we, we okay, we employ a hundred people, up, but we look on the value that we give w- with with our ecosystem. It's more than a hundred, mm-hmm. so it's uh, it's even more. And and where this is where we really can make uh, uh, make a difference. Um, but it's 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 also a journey. But we had, I think, we have had a very good collaboration with with the suppliers and trying to help them uh helping us also mm-hmm. um, to, i mean one concrete example was um our, our our fleet our car fleet where we where we transmitted it to electrical uh, the, the the supplier didn't know how to do that so we worked together basically and how to how to do uh, to do that in a good way, and how to set up the system and so forth. And and for them, it was uh, they could I mean they, they could sell the setup to 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 all other companies. But for us, it was very good. So and, and, mm-hmm. and I think that's the way you should should work with. Uh, yeah. with yeah. Super. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And so, Peb, please do look at the um, article that Lucia has posted with the full story of Chiesi's journey, which is really interesting. Yeah. And I think actually, I mean, the supplier, the role of the supplier, and the role of the business um, taking responsibility and the interests of the suppliers into account, I think, is going to be a huge part of new legislation from the EU, um, which I'm, I'm sure will be welcomed, as we do know in many supply chains, there still remains considerable abuse and considerable. Um, breaking of human rights. So there will, I think, be can, um, a real focus on that. Um, and it's often more invisible for the company with a long supply chain to really feel and see, but the cost and the effort involved in actually investigating what's happening pays back dividends um, if, if companies actually take the time to, to really find out what is going on in their supply chain. So we feel that that's a, a very strong part of what should come from future legislation at the EU level. Um, I know we haven't got too much time left, and I, I was going to ask you more about kind of your vision for the future, the leadership of the of, of business's role in this really complex, ever ever critical world that we're in. Um, just your old 
also particularly about leadership. I think this is something you have some strong thoughts about how leadership itself can show up in different parts and fit together. So let me pass to you, Mike, to you yeah, to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think this is, I mean, what 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 this movement provides us with in, in, in terms of B Corp, it's 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 in a way a higher purpose, and and that is uh, that is really what you need in a, in a company to have not only attracting younger people, but also attracting, I mean, people overall. And if you if you have the higher purpose, then you get the engagement within the company. And if you have the engagement and working with, with the, what we are trying to work with, trust also within the company. So security and trust and to make sure that everyone is working and trying to be the best, best version of themselves. If we work with these things, so high purpose, trust and engagement, then, then, then as a natural cause of this, you get results, not only for yourself and the company, but you get for the other stakeholders as well. So, so I think it's, this is really a win-win situation mm -hmm. as well. But it's, it's, it's a managerial question and it's 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 a question that needs to be addressed from the very top of the organization it it cannot be something that you put in a sustainability department anywhere it needs to be within the leadership team within the shareholders within the guiding principles in the company i think that is what ts has done so good in order to set those principles for us to work with and uh, i think i think it's really working that's beautiful. And I think that actually refers beautifully to Camilla's point here about the internal governance structures that are needed to make this happen. So in the boardroom, in the C-suite, in a big company such as yours, in the uh, affiliates boardrooms and the affiliates uh, management, that this is really embedded and it isn't something that's, as you say, written on a piece of paper, but not just the governance, but then the management as well. So <clears throat> that's a lovely sort of thread, I think, to which we would, if we had another half hour, we might continue on, but um, maybe just to, to sort of conclude, I think um, we really see the opportunity now that companies such as Piesi and the other 800 B Corps around Europe have provided to show the European Commission that we could run all businesses in a way that takes into account the interests of um, all the stakeholders but it would mean changing the duties of the directors so that they had to do this. And it isn't just a voluntary thing that some companies choose to do while the rest of the companies choose to go for the shareholders as the dominant. And this is the moment we have. And for those of you who are, um, yes, not to sort of, uh, uh, fully following um, all the EU activity on this, which is um, a very much a sort of minority sport. But just have a look on the chat. You will see some links here. Um, we're expecting now within the next week to finally see how far the European Union does propose that directors' duties are altered and due diligence required from those directors to run their supply chains with really full and elaborate consideration. So there's a huge amount at stake, literally. And so um, we've been doing a lot of work to really open up and myth bust, break out what actually it means to run a company in the interest of stakeholders. And all of what you've shared with us in, uh, from Chiesi today is, is really helpful, giving people a picture that a pharmaceutical company, which is super technical, very, very precise, has a whole load of regulation around it, a family owned company with many, many outlets across the Europe and the world can do this and uh, has, is learning all the time how to do it better and better. So it's a super helpful way of um, bringing this subject to more people. Thank you so much for being with us. Any last words before I finish from you? Because I know we'll all have to run to our work. But no, no. thank you, thank you so much. It's uh, it's been a pleasure being here, Katie. And and well, thank you, and for all you're doing, and for all that's going on in the Nordics to uh, to help us learn about your sustainability, but bed that into something which is really based on a true sense of governance. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, everyone else. I'm sorry we didn't get to all the questions. Paul, you had a very interesting question before. Olaf, I'll send it to him so maybe he can get back to you. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being with us on the journey. Enjoy. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.